everybody, it's Big Bougie. We live in the studio today <clears throat> with the one and only Goon. If you haven't known, we've been uh, working on this project, the Veterans Day, for a little bit now. It's about to come out, so he came on by ENC 96 to sit down and do the interview. So we're going to let him give a shot, so holler, let everybody know where he's from and what he's doing. All right, right. y'all already know. It's your boy Goon, you know, Reckon Goon Squad. Officially from Cold City, North Carolina, New Bern area, crazy kind of stand up, y'all already know. You know what I mean? I just want to shout out my whole team, you know, Sincere, to my nigga Slugger G, you know what I mean? Octane, Murdoch, Naldo, you know, the whole A camp, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, Akil, you know, I got my models, they grinding. Everybody's out here, man. We, we just doing the thing right now. Okay, now, you from the New Bern, Cold City area, right? All right. Tell me how growing up in that area affected you with hip hop. Um, being from the country, like you know, the hip hop era around there, we, you know, pretty much I grew up in the '80s, you know, so I listened to LL Cool J and stuff like that, you know, Wu Tang. We like the country kind of went harder than the city when it came to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like all, all of us was very in, in tune with the hip hop era. You know, we all the brands like crisscross stuff like that. It had, a, it had like a, a real heavy influence on us, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was a, I was mostly a fan of Criss Cross, you know. I, I kind of like the Criss Cross. They were baggy pants and stuff like that. That was kind of my swag back in the day, you know. So, that was a uh, Mac Daddy Daddy Mac back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, R.I.P. To, to one of the members yeah. he just passed on. Right. But, uh, that's, a, that's interesting because... <clears throat> Jermaine Dupri, he, he snatched them up at a young age, got them. Right, right, right. And they, they brought a whole culture of what I would say a new form of down south music to the masses through what they were doing. So, knowing that Criss Cross was one of your first introductions to hip hop, what was your first album that you ever bought that was hip hop? Um, I have to go with Jay Z's album. Reasonable doubt. Um, I was a, I was a hard hardcore Jay Z Nas fan. You know, like the Nas, Killmatic. Um, I, I was more so that, that Jay Z and Nas era. You know, I I, I, I really those, those guys really was basically my influence on rap, and I can say that because Nas so what influenced me with the poetry. Like he could write so good. You know that that kind of inspired me to pick up a pen. You know. Hey, let me see what I can do with this, you know. And I and I and I liked it, that, you know what I'm saying. But Nas and Jay Z was probably like the first. It was probably like the first album. Like I started actually going in the store asking, like, hey, let me get that Nas. Hey, let me get this. And back in those days, you know, you couldn't you couldn't really go in the store and buy CDs unless you was 18 years old. So right, know, right. I get somebody go in there, and say, hey man, get me a Nas CD, you know, get me a Jay Z CD, you know what I'm saying? I can pass some money to him to go get it for me, but. But Nas, Nas and Jay-Z, that was, that was like the first two real albums that I actually really went and bought spent some money on. For my listeners that's under the age of um, 21, that is before iTunes. See, <laughs> I got to give them a little history. Back then, yeah, you yeah. used to you used to stand outside all night long in the rain, snow, sleet, whatever. To be the, one of the first people the next <clears> day <throat> to hit school, to be here, wherever, and say you got this album. Um, it was kind of a supply and demand thing. Um, now, Jay Z Nas. Now that's an interesting combo because um, right. it's like yin and yang. That's New York hip hop. Right. But you do a lot of down south. Right. Where, where did the switch come from? <clears throat> well, uh, mainly with the, the style and the form of rap. You know, as the era and generation change. You know. It's more so I, I I take my style, I, I like to be versatile, you know what I'm saying? I like to switch it up. I like to give somebody someone everything to listen to. You know, I, I wanna let dudes know, hey, I can do I can I can get on this up north beat, I can rip that too. I can get on this down south beat, I can rip that too, you know. Cause like a lot of guys I do songs that say things like Nardo, my boy Brass, you know. Shout out to him. Shout track. out Brass Knuckles. Yeah, he raw, you know. I mean him did a track just yesterday, you know what I'm saying? He he's more of an up north type cat. He got up north swag, you know what I mean? But me and him, you know, we collab all the time. And, and, you know, my style and his style is totally different. But when we get together, we make magic. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you, you can't come in this game being a one-track 
or have one style that that's all you can do. You know, you got to be able to switch it up. You got to be versatile. Even though I don't like a lot of up north beats, I still will get in the booth and eat because that's where I started it at. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Now, I had a lot of people ask me. They said, "This dude Goon you work with talks a lot about holes, thoughts, <laughs> tricks, honey bunnies, uh, the ladies." Right. Uh, I even had one lady, she said, he's got a lot of women that follow him. Now, is that something that you purposely did with the music, or did you already have that woman following her? Because I bumped into a lady from uh, Winterville, my cousin, shout out, Shamika Boyd. She was like, oh, I know Mario, I know Mario. Everybody know Mario. All right. You know what I'm saying? Before I met you, I didn't know who he was, but everybody was like, you got to meet this rapper, he looked like Little Plies. He looked like Little Plies. I said, Little Plies, who that? Right, right. And it was you when I found out it was you. So how did you get this fan base that you got? Because it's, it's, it's uh, impressive that it's a lot of women. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I ain't even going to sugarcoat nothing. You know, I mean, back in school, you know, me and my brother, like, we was like most of the popular dudes anyway. You know, we like to dress and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> We, we we always had what you say somewhat like a fan base, um, you know, with, with the women, you know. I mean, it runs in the family, you know. Anybody know anything about doing it, you know, we always kept a couple females over here, a few over there, you know. But more so, like, I think when Fly did actually come out and people say we resemble each other, I think that kind of caught the eyes of, you know, more so, more women, you know. You know, I'm having, you know, I go from like maybe talking to two, three girls to now they're 25, 30 of them and just want to associate me for what I look like, you know. But being that, you know, I rap and then, you know, I look nice, you know, I, you know, make my little break, I go to work, uh, you know, they like that, you know, good daddy to my son. So, you know, a lot of women like that that figure and like that role model, they like that and they see that I'm intelligent, you know, and I'm about my business. And it's more so, they like that, you know, they feed into it. And it's a lot of women, it's, I mean, guys too, though. You know, I got a lot of guys, um, young guys that come up to me asking for advice and stuff like that too because they see where I come from and they see where I was headed and they see me make this big U-turn like, oh, he's out of the street now and it's cool to do right, you know. And, and I think more so they like that and I still got my same street image and my same street career, you know what I'm saying, even though that I changed my life around, I still have my street career too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they admire that. So it's more so, they say, oh, hey, this guy got stuff together. You know, they, they like that. People admire somebody that's successful and making it like they like that, you know. And I say that's how most of I picked up a fan base, you know, the rap. I mean, with the bars too, you know, I always, I always rap back in the day. And I can say that kind of pretty much persuaded a lot of people too, because it was like, man, he's raw. Because I started out battle rap. You know, I, I, I was never a song maker. So you, you started out battle rapping. Right, right, right. So how, how do you transition from the battle rapper to making the songs? Because <clears> most, <throat> now you make some good songs. Right. Because most battle rappers, no disrespect to my battle rappers out there, but other than someone like Cassidy and Freeway, and you got, you got a couple here and there, Meat Mills, most of them can't make that transition into being an artist from being a battle rapper. How do you make that transition? <clears throat> right, because becoming a battle rap is more so, you're, you're, you're more focused on bars. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's more so, you're you you you're going for the kill. It's like a lion when he's out hunting zebra. You know, you, you're not thinking about stopping for no book. You, you're just going for the kill. And it's more so it's the lyrics, wordplay, is that third. And you know, what, what drove me kind of away from that era was, I'm not here winning, you know, winning. I went undefeated. You know, I had a couple uh, contests. Went to a Jacksonville with my cousin Roger. But he's he's he saved now, but he used to battle rap too. We used to go to Jacksonville to a competition there, skating ring and stuff like that. But more so, I, as, as the more I done it, you know, it kind of dawned on me that battle rappers are 